This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. How are you? It's Alex Bennett, and it is the uh, the Ramble. Um, we had some problems tonight. I don't know what they are. But Facebook just won't. Uh, it'll take a signal, and then it'll uh, completely drop it when you try to play it. So, I uh, there we're just doing the show um, uh, on audio tonight. We are recording the video, however. So after the show is over, we will be able to um, take the program and put it on the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, in it, uh, put it on the Facebook page so anyway so we're recording it and uh, that 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 will do that meanwhile if you want to hear the show well I can't tell you I wrote it on the Facebook page if you want to hear the audio go on over to uh, gabnet.net uh, I'm getting really frustrated with just uh, the whole damn thing Okay, and with the uh, with the way in which it all works, and and trying to get it to work, and I I, I don't know that uh, somehow something didn't screw me up, uh, but uh, with with uh, with Skype, um, with some stuff we were doing yesterday, but I I have no idea. Let me take my camera and just move it a little bit. There we go. That makes it a lot better. Anyway, I'm going to open up the lines. I hear that uh, Phil is not going to be here tonight. Uh, so uh, uh, that's fine. You know, uh, we get along without him. Um, so I'm waiting for your calls. Let me see here. Uh, hide conversation. There we go. Okay. All right. We're ready to go anytime you're ready to call. Uh, it's just very frustrating. You know, every time you think you're just like one step ahead and you're ready to go with it, uh, all of a sudden, the whole thing, you know, goes geschwinko, geschwinko on you. So uh, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but anyway, our, our lines are open, and uh, I can't tell you how much I don't want to do a show tonight. <laughs> because I'm just, I'm frustrated. I'm just absolutely fucking frustrated by, by uh, uh, the video problems that we have here. Uh, and... Um, you know, uh, but here comes Rob Alfano, and here comes Jeff Stein. There we go. There we go. And let me let me do a little uh, transition here so that you can see these people. There we go. Uh, Charlene Martinez is calling. Let me add her to the mix. Uh, and um, let's see here. Who else is calling? Somebody else is calling. Is that Tim? I see. I don't know. Charlene was on. Now she's yeah, not. Yeah, Alex. Yeah, you're there. Okay. Yeah, I'm calling you on the. I you have to add me as a contact again for some reason. I think I got a new version of Facebook. No, it doesn't. That, I, that, that we don't have to do that any longer. Oh. Uh, okay. Let me but see I, here. I, let I, me I, hold on. Well, let me hang up on you, Charlene. I'll call you right back. Well, wait a minute. Right. Sit, wait a okay. minute. Hold on. Just stay where you are. Add the group. Okay. Call Skype. Okay. There we go. Do you, are you getting anything, Charlene? No, not yet. Okay, let me get rid of you. Okay. Um, no, I'd hang you up. No, I, I just want to tell you, Alex, I was listening to the whole thing. Yeah. I love Robert Klein. I love Don Barrera. Uh, uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. But that's, on, right? Uh, yeah, okay. But we're not talking about that now. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, all right. You're going to hang up? Yeah, I'm going to hang up on you, and I'll, I'll call you right back, Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, let me see here. Uh, okay. Now I can add, say add her to group. Call Skype. Let's see if we can uh, if she can get us now. Uh, well, I don't know what that that was. Who is one? What is that number? I have no idea. Everything's screwing up on me. Uh, I, is there somebody else online right now? No. Okay. Let me I'm get on. rid of it. I know you're there, Jeff, and you're there, Rob. How about Charlene? Are you there? Charlene, can you hear us? Well, let me see here. Remove from this group. 
Let me try Charlene one more time. No, it doesn't work. Wait a minute. I added you to the. Uh, I added uh, Mike to the group. Add. Okay, call Charlene. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Mike is gone again. I don't know. What this is one of those nights? Facebook isn't working. Uh, you know. So it's. Who is, who is that? Okay, Mike, are you there? Yes, I am. Well, then how come we how come we kept losing you? Hell if I know. Yeah, and uh, Charlene, I don't know what your problem is, Charlene, but uh, I'm going to remove you from the group again, and I'm going to try calling you one more time, and then I'm giving up on you. Okay, here we go. There we go, and. Uh, are you there, Charlene? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you got your camera on? Um, let me see here, because you know what? You're coming in on my phone. Oh, well, I don't want to come in on your phone. Well, is your I know, I had my laptop all wait, set Wait a minute, up. wait a minute. Your phone is Skype, isn't it? Yeah, and I can't well, hear it turn, so on, turn on the camera on your phone. We'll be able to see you. Oh, damn it. I'm sorry. I don't know what the hell happened. Well, I can see everybody. Can you call us from your desktop? Um, I'm telling you, it says this person has not shared their details with you. Like I'm hitting the camera for video, you know, to start the call. Yeah. Well, and, there's Mar there's Charlene Martinez, me? but I'm getting you, but I'm not getting you. Let me hang up on. Uh, just hang up a second. Okay. 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 All right. Let me see here. Let me hang up on her there. Let me bring her in here. Uh, uh, that's not working. That's not working. Son of a bitch. Let me see here. Let me, Let me see uh, if I see. No, it, it, you didn't hang up. You didn't hang oh, okay. up. Hang up on this. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Add, oh, add to contacts. Okay. Now if Charlene tries to call... Here we go. Add to group. There. Wait a minute. Now we got her twice. Oh, I got it. I got it. Uh, okay. Well, hang up your phone. Okay. I'm turning off my phone. Oh, jeez. Hey, see, this is more trouble than it's worth. Um, well, no, we wanted to get rid of that. Okay. Now we've we've got... Can you hear me, Charlene? Oh, yeah, yeah. Clear. There we you go. You can hear me too, right? Well, you've just taken up 10 minutes of our show. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, well. But no, I was listening to everything, and I really liked it, Alex. Yeah. Um, you know, you're the guy. I know you don't like them, but you were the one that explained Lenny Bruce, and I went out and got a lot of books and read up on Lenny Bruce and yeah. everything. Because my father used to think Lenny Bruce was Cousin Brucey. I think I told you that once. <laughs> and I wanted to know. I knew something was wrong because my father was crazy, and, you know. And I loved Dom Herrera. He's that guy that goes, is this thing on? Is this thing on? He started that, right? No, I think he's hysterically funny. He's not the and one. Then, uh, he's not the one that started that. Really? Because no. he used to do that. Is this thing on? He, yeah. he is funny. Yeah. And I'm watching the uh, stand up. What is it called? I'm dying up here. Yeah. I think I'm a little behind on that. But and Don Marrero is on that show. I know, with like a toupee or something, maybe. Right? No, no. He just gained no. a lot of weight. I know. Yeah, he used to be thinner. Yeah. But uh, Robert Klein, I just watched an old Dick Cavett show. And, uh, Robert I'd rather Knight, I'd know. rather not talk about comedy. Tell you the truth. Oh, all right. Well, I enjoyed it though. You know, I love. Comedy. I had I'm... I had how many years of, of comedy? If your current call will be, if you call Charlene Martinez, your current call will be put on hold. I don't want to call Charlene Martinez. What do I keep getting these notes? For? You know, you know the fat fuck. What I heard out here, it might be like a joke. You know, remember Chris Christie? Yeah. You know, I, I think, I don't know, you, you might have given credit to Renee or something, but I put that picture of him in the, in the litter box, uh, and then I put the other one with the helicopters, you know, and the Macy Parade float thing. They say now that um, he's going to make laws so that they can't fly over his private beach anymore. I don't know if he can do that, though, right? So they can't take any more pictures. I heard that out here. I don't think he's doing that, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, I don't think that. Part. I think that's like some kind of urban myth. Anyway, how you, how you doing, Rob? I'm doing okay. How yeah. are you? I'm doing lousy. I can't get the, uh, I couldn't get the uh, Facebook uh, feed going tonight. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, every I time, every time that. I put it up, it just started and then it stopped. 
you would play it and it would stop. And uh, I gotta love the internet. Yeah, I don't know what caused that. I know that live stream was f fiddling around yesterday with my Facebook, but I got my show on last night, so that was after they fiddled around with it. So it can't be that. It's probably something with Facebook. You know. Welcome to my twenty years. My last twenty years. That's what all I did was. You come in one day and what worked yesterday doesn't work today, and then you spend. Yeah that whole day trying to figure out why that didn't work. Welcome to IT. It's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I have no idea why it's why it's not working, you know. It'll just start suddenly start working again. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like it's like scratch your head going, uh, what net what should I do next, you know. <laughs> it's you just you know, you have to have really and and Alex has that. You have to have that ability to to break it down and troubleshoot it from step A to step B to step C and where it goes. And it's tedious. And you know something? I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, yeah, you know something? I don't want to do that anymore. I just want to turn the fucking thing on and have it work. And I know it's probably something at Facebook. It's probably something at Facebook. Yeah, something beyond your control. Because I've tried it. Uh, I've tried reinitiating the stream, uh, adding a new uh, what we call stream key about five times and every time it does the same thing and it can't be me because it does start the stream but then it immediately stops it yeah. you know and well, i've re you know i've rebooted my the, the program that does this uh, you know does the video on this and none of it seems to work and i've been just having this problem with facebook uh where uh live stream is concerned because i'm supposed to be able to you know generate a, f a facebook stream out of uh, out of a, a live stream, and it doesn't work. It doesn't connect. And they came on and they did a team viewer thing with me and started playing with it yesterday. And they couldn't get it to work. And I don't think they did anything that changed my relationship to to Facebook. You know, but it it's just you know it's amazing, it's just it's amazing. Glorious. It just knocks you down. It's you know. Yeah. I I learned something. I. I was good at it. I worked hard at it. I was very successful. Yeah. 20 years of doing it. And I realized I fucking hate it. And you know why I realized that? Yeah. Because I have no patience. Because I was motivated because I had to get paid really nicely to do that work for 20 years. Yeah. But in my house, the first sign of trouble, I run from it or I want to call somebody <laughs> and say it's broken fix it because i have no interest in spending any time fucking around with any of that crap yeah if my internet's not working man i get i just i you know it's not like at work i where i work i jump into you know fix mode because it's my job but at home i don't i don't know how you do it because i used to get paid to do it and i last you know, night i was yesterday i was trying to send out email from here i couldn't send email out so what am i doing i'm blaming myself first okay so I'm trying to, I'm rebooting the machine. I'm doing all kinds of things. And then finally I call the the cable company and they have an a, a message on their machine that says, uh, oh, our, uh, our email isn't working right now. Yeah. Well, and that's Fuck why you. I, I immediately call the companies. If I have a, pro I, have, I got a printer here that, uh, you know, the com I have a company computer and a company printer because I work from home. Yeah. And uh, it's a beautiful printer and it worked great. I plugged it in and it's been working since the day I started here. Then I just, my laptop crapped out on me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even that old, but it died. And I, and I called the company and they sent me a new laptop and this laptop had windows 10 on it and from that point on that printer it's a one of those office jets it it prints it scans it faxes it does all of it and it does it great yeah all of a sudden i couldn't get it to work and i'm spending all this time because again it's my job right it's not my personal printer but eventually i got to a point where i called hp and i said you guys got to help me fix this and it wasn't under warranty and twice I got them to fix the scanning thing first, and I got them to fix the printing thing second. And they, you know, I sat there like a dumb user who never looked at a computer, and they took over my computer and they fixed it. And I just yeah. sat there and went, "Isn't this nice?" Because <laughs> I have no patience. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's 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 frustrating, absolutely mm -hmm. fucking frustrating. Uh, and and so to all the people who normally, I'll get to you in a second, Jeff. To all those people who normally watch our video. I'm sorry, you know, and maybe maybe it's be fucked up forever for all I know, 
you know, or it could be that after I get off the air and I test the thing again, it'll work, you know. But I just, I hate being at at the at the. Somebody's got something on somewhere. I'm hearing a slap back a little bit. Hold on, let me turn you guys down a second and see if I can get rid of it. Yeah, it's gone now. Uh, that that you know, I'm just trying to do a show here. I'm trying to do the best possible program I can do. I'm trying to be entertaining. All right. First, we start off. Charlene has nothing but problems with Skype. Okay, I'm sorry. so we deal with that for ten fucking minutes. And I, before that, I can't get the show on Facebook. I'm there's so much that comes between me and doing a show that never existed before. Before, they used to just be a microphone, a control board a line out of the control board that went to the transmitter, which in many cases was in the next room, okay? Yeah. And you did your show. And the only thing that could go wrong is if one of, the, one of the few things in that series of events didn't work. Now, it's like the whole fucking internet and a whole bunch of people who don't know what the fuck they're doing. And, and I, all I want to do is I want to push a button have people see the video of this show, and Facebook is fucking up tonight. I tried rebooting my, my browser. I tried other browsers. It was the same problem with all of them, you know. So what are you going to do, you know? Simplify your life, man. Huh? Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I should just go back to doing it as an audio show because that always works. I've yeah. never had that go out on me. Unless, you know, unless I had a problem here where all of a sudden the uh, my ISP wasn't working or something, you know? Or, or, or split the difference. Instead of doing it live on Facebook, do what you're doing tonight, which is record the video yeah. and then just post it. That's probably what I should do, you know? Yeah. Because right now I have more listeners listening to the audio than normally listen to it because most of them hop over to the video to watch it there, you know? Right. Uh, and... Uh, and this isn't a TV show. This is actually a talk show meant for audio broadcasting. So, you know, uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Uh, I, I, it just gets to the point where you go, why am I doing this? You know, why am I, you know, you would think that the, because we're on the Internet, it would be simpler. You know, and it the is, fact is, it is... You had purposeful built equipment in that radio station. The transmitter did one thing, right? Mm -hmm. the control board did one thing. Your phones did one thing. Your CD players or cart machines or whatever you used did one thing, and they were all hardwired. You press a button, and they worked. Today, with the Internet, there's so many different things that are uh, they're not purposeful built for one thing. Well, I'm, I'm having enough problems with Facebook Live that I may take this over to YouTube for video. My the YouTube think it'll do as well though with uh, with the audience. I, it, well, if they, well, if they want to watch it on video, they got to go over to over to uh, they'd have to go over to uh, YouTube. But I think more people spend time on Facebook than they do on YouTube. Well, that could well be. But if I'm going to have stuff like this happen, and it's not. Uh, um, what can we call it? Reliable. Then why the fuck should I be doing it anyway? You know. Well, it's been reliable. It's just lately, right? It's well, the, been. tonight this thing really just frustrated me completely because it, if, if anybody tried to watch it tonight, you start it, and then it just stops, and then yeah. you start it again. And it, 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 you know, when I'm transmitting, it does do the picture, whatever picture was up at the time, and then it just stops. And uh, uh, I, I think if other people could call and say whether they had that same problem, let me know because it, maybe it's just here. I don't know, you know, but I don't think so. I think it's, you know. Hi, Tony. Tony joined us. Uh, I didn't even notice Tony joined us. I just pushed a button and there was Tony. Monday, I'm back to that shit box. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it burns down by then. <laughs> oh, jeez, Tony. <laughs> In the no, family business. Yeah. Now, Jeff wanted to say something. Jeff? I'm sure. Well, whenever I have a problem with, with my computer or the, or the software or the hardware or whatever, I have a 14-year-old granddaughter, mm -hmm. and that's who I use. 
it cost me. <laughs> well, it, this isn't a technical. She knows so much more than I know. Yeah, but anymore. this this isn't a technical thing I don't know about. You know, I know that, that but somehow the problem is between here and there. You know. Uh oh, Tony. What was Sorry. that? What was that? Oh, somebody bowling there in the room. This is why I gotta move. I have to put you on mute because somebody got their car stolen. I think. Uh, <laughs> You're telling telling the car out there. Somebody got their car stolen in your neighborhood. I Welcome I saw a car getting towed once when I lived in Queens. Like it wasn't my car. I was happy. Yeah. Wow. Did he get in trouble for that? I mean, the the, the well, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, you know, Muslim. everybody last night was Czechoslovakian. Who's I? I was. I was listening. I was jumping through the. Uh, you know, my car thing, I was playing the, the uh, replay because I'm Czechoslovakian. Everybody was Czechoslovakian. It was a good show last night. And Rob, I want to thank you. you. A lot of times, whatever you're saying, like you said, you want to die. Well, you're glad you're this age now. Me too, because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. You know, we had a good in our generation and I think that's it. I want to just go out now and, you know, not. I don't care about the future. I'm glad I'm not young. Right? Yeah. And I'm glad I don't have any kids or grandkids or anything. Well, like. I have a kid. I know. I wish I didn't kind of, but whatever. I don't want to he, go there. He, he, here is, uh, here's Tim, who has no problems with technology. He doesn't use it. <laughs> oh. Do you know, you know something, Alex? Yes. Uh, I started out in 1969. I applied to the Case Institute of Technology, which is Cleveland, Ohio, version of MIT. Yeah. In my, I had to do an essay so I could get admitted early. My essay literally was, you know, and this was early, back in the 69, we got to watch out because technology should be a slave to us, but it looks like we're going to end up being a slave to technology, and here we are. Oh, you're absolutely right. Mm. You're absolutely and, right. And it should work the other way around, but uh, we were using the big, you know, punch cards, and we had a Univac 1108, some yeah. huge computer we were using, um, and now times have changed, and you can put that... A room for a bedroom for a computer into an iPhone now. Yeah, but I mean it's it's just that that my and 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 Rob knows what I'm talking about. You know, uh, you 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 do want to do a program, and uh, you try to do it, but then all of a sudden something is preventing you from doing it, and it's nothing you have any control over. Right. You know, I don't know. I mean, maybe it is something wrong with me. Or maybe suddenly Facebook said, fuck Alex Bennett, we're not going to run this thing. <laughs> but I think I would have gotten a message to that extent, you know. I think it's a lack of standards across the industry. And there's so many vendors. And uh, they also let the, because they developed so much memory and so much speed, programmers got really lazy when they write software. See, I, I, all, I tell you, I, I hate to say something nice about about uh, um, um, my old employer, okay? Uh, serious? The serious. Uh, but I, but uh, let, me, let me say this, that in the entire time that I worked for Sirius, and I think, Rob, you probably experienced the same thing. You know, that's a very complicated system because you're taking my signal in the studio, you're sending it out to a processor, which then sends it out somewhere else, that sends it out somewhere else to an uplink to a satellite, which then has to come down and go to your car or your home or whatever. And in the nine years that I worked there, I don't think the system ever went down. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Now, you would think that Facebook could fucking do that. <laughs> well, there's a difference. Oh, by, the way, by the way, Mike, we don't have a picture on you. I think the difference yeah. there is that Facebook isn't motivated the same way Sirius is to keep that up and running, right? They don't get paid. Ba if, if it goes down, okay, it goes down. You know, Alex Bennett isn't paying for the service, and neither are the people who are looking to watch it. It's very different. So you're right. I can no, – I can't ever remember Sirius. I mean, I remember I they never let me in the data center. Now I I was working. I mean, and those were, those were in the days when you were just starting. I mean, Sirius was just starting. It wasn't. It was just uh, actually. Oh, you were just. I, yeah, practicing. I was there before. I was there uh, from oh one until oh four. Right, and they were testing it basically. You left in about, 01, you We left, were doing you, shows up to nothing. You left at the time I you, uh, I came there. You started in oh four. Yeah. No, no. 
Yeah, I started in 04. Yeah. 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 That's when I we had 300 I, I we, 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 we had 350,000 uh, subscribers subscribers. Well, that's what it was when I left. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what you heard that I came and you wanted to get out of there is that what happened? <laughs> that's when uh, Kid Kelly came to me one day, tapped me on the shoulder and said, "You've been doing a great job for us, uh, but we're not going to use you anymore." Oh shit. <laughs> nice. <Wow. laughs> really? Really? Yeah, that's the way it works. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. There's but, no uh, there's no business like right. show business. By the way, whatever happened to Mike? Are you there, Mike? I got by. We got a picture on him. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, there I'm, he is. got a still picture anyway. I'm going to get rid of him. Yep. There we go and he can call back if he wants to. This, yes. There's always one thing that works on Facebook. What? The ads. The ads never stop. Uh, I, I, I never get it. I never get any on mine for some reason. There's uh, an there's an app you can run. Yeah. And I don't have Facebook anymore, but there's an app, and I can't remember the name of it. If you Google it, you'll probably find it, which deletes all of the all of the ads that run on Facebook. Well, all I know is I don't have any on the side. And you may be running that app without knowing it. No, I think you, yeah, you would know it. Because you have to install it. It's like a plug into your browser, and it stops and ends all of the Facebook ads. You're not bothered by them anymore. My favorite, I just ignore them. <laughs> my, my favorite app. That, yes, Jeff. I was going to say, the monster that we created now devours us. I think you're, you've got a, you got a point there. I mean, it, it's... But it's just that I don't want to have to rely on somebody else's uh, technology. You know, I mean, I like to know that I have control over what I'm doing. And right now, tonight, I'm not putting the show out over Facebook, uh, which gets me a large audience. Uh, I, mm -hmm. How big is the audience getting for the audio? Let's see here. Uh, I always check Facebook first to see who's on and everything. And then, of course, when I get on Skype, I get to see you all. But... Today it was all on the GabNet, just straight audio. Yeah. So it's like, well, you know, well, Phil isn't there. Okay, I'm on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, had, Phil's not there. Yeah, okay, I'll come on. You, no. You had to but, hear it. Yeah. So, so, you know, I mean, it just, it, it, it kind of is very frustrating uh, to me to, to do a show under these circumstances. You know, and I'm sitting here worrying about whether, oh, is this going to be fucked up forever? That's the one thing I always worry about. Or will I suddenly try it tomorrow with the test and it'll work just fine like just the advice of an of alcoholics anonymous one day at a time don't think about it being fucked well, up forever. i'd like to think that it was like <laughs> something that this guy from Livestream did that fucked it up because he was fooling around trying to get facebook to work on uh on live streams program and uh but last night i went on and did a show and there wasn't one glitch for the entire show you know so mm -hmm. it i and then I come in tonight and it does this, so it can't be me. It's got to be. It's got to be Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, most likely. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well. So anyway, or something <clears throat> between you and Facebook, but I, not you. I'm frustrated. I, I've just, I've, I've come to um. Uh, by the way, I had ravioli tonight. Uh, I decided uh -oh. to blow my <laughs> diet for one night. No, I went. Italy I went down to Italy and got ravioli. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> tomorrow. All low carbs, you know, uh, but I don't think I ate more carbs than would put weight on me. But anyway, that You're was to, that was to, that was to make me happy. But I went all the way downtown just to get ravioli, right? And I'm coming back. I take the train, and it's three o'clock, and I don't know. It was like what I hear goes on in Tokyo, where you literally had to take people and and have, have people with feet pushing people into the train just to be able to get them all in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And finally, I'm, I get a seat. What I did, I went. This woman was sitting there, and I, and there was a space next to her. And I tried to sit in it, but it was too small because she was too fat. Mm -hmm. And she was nice enough to get up and let me have my seat. Oh. All right, you know. But I mean, she and she knew she was fat and that she was taking up a lot of space. <laughs> but anyway, she knew I, she was fat. I, I'm sitting there, and I wish Phil were on tonight because this would drive him. This little rant of mine would drive him nuts. All right. <laughs> uh, Somehow he'll. But I'm, I'm, I'll I'm, email him. Let I'm him make sure he, he sees he the. I, I'm the sitting there. I'm sitting there, 
and I'm looking at all the people on the train, and I'm playing the game that all guys usually play. Would I fuck her? Would I fuck her? Would I fuck her? You know, do you ever play that game? Huh? Huh? Yeah, and then you find out it's a him. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> In, in which, and then you go. In, in which well, case, well, I'm. I uh, <laughs> in which case, in the, uh, uh, in any event, I am simply looking at the image, not the reality. Okay, so you want to dress like a woman and you look great, go right ahead. Remember, one time, I don't know if you remember this, John. We were out in Queens doing a drag beauty contest. Mm -hmm. we, I don't think I. I think I was right before I started. We were shooting it, and, and I'm shooting it. And uh, I, I, this this one person comes out and it looks so sexy. And I'm all I'm doing, all I can see is through the viewfinder. Because when you're shooting, somebody said, how can you shoot all those naked women and not get a boner? And I say, because I'm looking through a viewfinder. And all I care about is getting the shot, you know. And that, that will ruin any boner you ever are going to have, right? <laughs> and uh, it was a guy, of course, dressed as a woman, but gorgeous. And mm -hmm. I and I actually right. put a still of this person on the f end of the show, uh, and everybody yep. would ask me, "Who's that woman? Oh, that, that's a sexy woman." And I would show it to guys, and they get turned on by it. And I say, "You know, that's a guy." They, what? <laughs> nah. You know. And I said, "But don't feel you're gay or anything like that, because you're buying the image. You're not. You know. You're not buying the the reality." Um, you're seeing the inner being. You're seeing the inner being. Uh, no, I wouldn't go that. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, but you know, you're 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 seeing an image. You're seeing, you know. So anyway, uh, I mean, movie stars don't look that good. They get made up. You know. Uh, so what happened? What happened to you, Mike? Mike, what happened to you? Oh, a little internet interference. No, oh, okay. All right. Anyway, where were we? Oh, oh. So anyway, I'm 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 driving home. And I'm riding home, playing uh, what I fuck or wouldn't I fuck her, and um, uh, it, it purely a mental game you play because you're not going to be able to fuck any of them, even if you wanted to. Okay. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there was nobody I said I'd fuck her. All right, on the train. But I'm looking at all these people on the train, and they are all in various states of dress. They are obviously coming home from work, and they're all looking depressed. <laughs> That's okay? Me, End of the day. That's you, Tony. But it's not I, just I'm you. Not You're not complain. alone. You, you, you had I'm, companions. And I'm not trying to complain. On this train, you absolutely had Dozens and dozens of companions who obviously their job is not satisfying. They do it to put food on the table. They do it to keep themselves uh, in, in some kind of meager amount of money that these people who are taking advantage of them are paying them. And um, they are, you know, they looked absolutely miserable. Everybody on the train. <laughs> and all I could think was, you know, we keep talking about being a nation that likes to produce stuff. You know, we're, we're great at producing stuff. Uh, we produce Apple computers, and we produce this, and we produce that. We produce television, and we do this, and we do this. The one product we've never concerned ourselves with was happiness. Mm -hmm. And that we should be a nation that can, is, prides itself in making its main product happiness. What's wrong with that? Tell me, tell me I'm stupid. <laughs> tell me I'm uh, pie in the skying it. How do you monetize it? That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I was thinking, Alex, like when you said that, I think we do work too much. I'm, I mean, me, I'm not trying to complain, but I think as I get older now, I don't want to sound flippant. I really don't give a shit about work. It's just a place to go to. You know, I wouldn't care if I'm working here. I don't really take too much stock in it. Someone's like, all right, I'll go there. Maybe you shouldn't take things so serious. Even if you're making a lot of money. Does what it do you, really matter at the end of the day? I'm glad I have my health, really. You're right, but we get all caught up in the trappings of life. And those things, those things obligate you to continue to make that money. There are those of us who, who aren't attracted to those things, but... Americans in general are living above their means, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have money. Well, what money brainwashed the bank. that want those things? What's that? 
they brainwash us to want those things. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, it doesn't take much. <laughs> it's the media. It's you know, you see it all over. You know, everybody wants bigger, better. You know, my, my kids all have smartphones. The latest smartphone. I have a flip phone. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a tablet. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Right. I, I, it's just they can't afford those phones, but they have them. There you go, and the, and so that obligates you to have to go to work every day. And most people are miserable going to that job, and they're but they know they have to because they got the rent coming. But and I think the, Alex, the car very, I think Alex was lucky to have a job where he communed with people. Yeah, and there, there's a there, you get a great a great feedback from that, even if it doesn't go well. If you're communicating with people. That, I worked at Social Security for almost 40 years, mm. and I had a lot of equipment that didn't work. I had to deal with employees. But when I had to deal with the customers, and I had a couple bad ones that, you know, went to kill us and stuff. But most <laughs> of the time, most of the time, most of the normal people I worked with, I was getting paid to help those people and work them through a problem or solve something or, or teach them something. And it really, I, got, I really enjoyed my work. Uh, um, so working with people is a, if you get a job where you work with people, and it's not crazy. It's not like a prison or something. Didn't you enjoy a little, most, going to work most of the time, Alex? Do I did I enjoy going to work most of the time? Uh, yes, yes, I did. Um, um, well, you're still doing it. See? Huh? <laughs> sure. You're still doing it. Yeah, yeah, I'm still doing it. And you're good at it, and you have to be good at it too. But I think the two together, there are jobs you can find, and you know you have certain trappings. But uh, I think you you got to find a you, you can be lucky to get a job where, uh, like you know, some of the health fields yeah. can be very fulfilling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you have so. to be if you really want to be successful in life. And I learned this in my younger by the time I was twenty. You have to have a passion for what you do. Otherwise, you'll be you can you can you can live and do it and all that. But if you have a passion for it, then then you don't get to mo- you don't wish for Friday when it's Monday morning. I, I don't know? think I, I, I don't think I ever hated what I do. Uh, I was telling somebody yesterday. I had somebody that came in that had been his career had been influenced by mine. Uh, he and he always wanted to meet me. He had become a broadcaster and. Uh, become a talk show host and some very big stations. And uh, we were talking about it. And he said, you know, the one thing is that uh, I've never hated going on the air. You know, I've never had a day where I hated going on the air. And I said, I've never had a day that I didn't hate going on the air. (laughs) And it's true. Uh, I have hated going on the air. I hate doing this show every single night. (laughs) But once I'm doing it, then I feel good. Right. See, I mean, because all of a sudden I'm talking to people and it's getting my mind off and nobody can hurt me right now, you know. While I'm on the air, nobody can interrupt me. When I was working (laughs) at a radio station, no program director could come in and tell me what to do while I was doing the show. You know, it was the one safe place. But... Every day of my life, I think I've almost said, I hate doing a show today. And I go in and do it, and I feel great. That's yeah. interesting. All yeah. the time I was in radio and television, I never, I, I didn't give a damn what day of the week it was, what hour of the day it was. If I was working doing radio or television, I was, it didn't matter if it was a holiday. People would say to me, oh, Christmas Day, you, you know, I would have you know, an early dinner and then have to go off to the radio station yeah. and say, how could you do that? I go, I, I love it. I don't have well, a, I, I, take I, care everybody. Yeah. I'm on my way. Well, I mean, I must not have hated it too much because it, it took heaven and earth to get me to take a vacation, you know, because I said, why do I need a vacation? I'm enjoy, I enjoy being on the air. You know, now I know that doesn't seem to make sense when I said a moment ago that there isn't a day that I didn't go on the air that I hated doing it. But that is, the, the psych, I guess, the psychological place I put myself in, okay, to do a radio program. So. And, and not everybody can do that. It's an art. It is a real art. No, it's not an art. No. Well, I, no. maybe I shouldn't say an art. But you're also a teacher, not just a communicator. If you're just a communicator 
Yeah, you may not have loved it, but you're also a very good teacher, too, I think. You teach Phil every night, but he's <laughs> Although he refuses to learn. <laughs> Well, apparently, yeah, apparently he hasn't learned any. He hasn't learned anything, you know. So he's going to have to have a slip, uh, you know, an excuse when he comes back. Yeah. Where is he? Because uh, maybe he doesn't want to be around because of what happened in the news. Now nah, that's never stopped him before. <laughs> what, what happened in the news today that's uh, you know more unusual than any other day? Yeah, well, right. today, today, they, today they released the transcripts. Remember, he uh, oh, yeah, he, yeah. he had a phone call with um, the, the news. The fake news reported that he had a contentious phone call with the premier, the premier of uh, of Australia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And he and called it fake too. news. He said it's fake news, fake news. Well, they released the transcripts of those calls today. Yeah. Okay. And, and he literally, he literally said he enjoyed his conversation. He told the guy, "I enjoy my conversation with Putin more than I do with you." <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He said, and I, 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 I think he said something like at the end of it, "I can't take this anymore," yeah. or something yeah. like that. It's something that. And I think effect. he called Mexico and told the president of Mexico they have to pay for the wall, and they told him they're not paying for the wall again. Yeah. And he said, "That's uh, no, okay." No, it just wasn't that. It wasn't that. You say. got it. You got the. You got the bad part of it. You didn't get the bad part of it, Charlene. Right. What mm-hmm. he did is he was begging the prime right. minister or the because president of Mexico to do it, to, to, do do it, it to do it because it would make him look bad if they didn't because he made right. it as a campaign promise. He was he begging word, him. He, he right. The words, I can't live with that. Right, <laughs> right, right. I can't right. live with that. Just don't say anything to the press. It'll all come out in the wash. We'll figure it out. Meaning you're not really going to have to pay for it. We'll let everybody think you're paying for it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But the uh, guy was – he didn't want the, the – he didn't want the PR, you know, mess. At that the rallies, figure. he's still saying something about the wall and they go, build the wall. They're still yelling that, those people at the rallies, you know, so yeah. it, it's just ridiculous. It's t- I, I can't believe when I watch this stuff. It's crazy, isn't it? It's, oh, and, it's, and, a up, it's a soap opera. Alex, I love when you say, "I, you know, did you, did you see that there's a thing going around? The Simpsons predicted that he would be president, oh. and they predicted that he will die, and he's in a coffin. It's this creepy oh. thing my friend sent me. Um, you know, like the Simpsons predicted that that he's going to die in office or something. You know, how you say oh, he, look, he looks sick or something. You know." Hmm. What was an hey, old they, episode? Hired, somebody hired that lady that convinced years. her boyfriend to commit suicide. Oh, I heard about that, that one. <laughs> yeah, they're prosecuting her. She texted him that he should. Uh, she 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 might have been sent. And a half years in prison. Yep. That's a little That's bit bizarre. I, but I think she's only going to get to only going to have to serve two and a half months. Is no, what fifteen I think. months. Fifteen months. Fifteen months. Yeah, she got two and a half years, and they're commuting it to fifteen months. The rest is going to be broken. Her big mistake was is that when he he turned on the gas and started gassing himself in the car, and then he chickened out and opened up the car door and got out of the car, and she texted him and saying you're a coward or something like that. Get back in the car and kill yourself. And that's when he got back in the car, and that's what she got found guilty on. Yes, Mike. Well, she was just joking. She was just joking. Yes, Mike. Did you see in the Congress now that the special way caught uh, prosecutor is being protected by, I think it's Congress, passed a bill. Right, right. That Trump says that, uh, says, oh, we, I'm going to fire him, I'm going to fire him. Sorry, John. Mueller. Mueller. Sorry, uh, Tr- uh, Donald. You can't fire him because Congress is backing him up. Well, Mueller just, yeah. J- Mueller just impaneled a, gl- a grand jury. Yes. On the whole, Russia his own thing. jury. He's not you. You know, yeah. a, a spe- he he actually created a well, grand jury. Well, he created a special do. grand jury wait, so they, they so they so, so, no wait a minute. So they <laughs> no so they could concentrate on this particular task at hand rather than be just a general grand jury who sees everything. What are you What are you doing there? Yeah, people won't be able to see this till after the show because that's when I'll post it. You were just doing the jerk off sign there, Brian. Hey, Brian, yeah, it's my way of saying goodbye to Trump whenever this grand jury gets put together to, uh, you know, he dig up. He wants. Well, you know, I, I, it could well, here's what I see. I don't see him getting impeached, okay? Mm-hmm. I think that's a long way to impeach. Well, I can see him being impeached. I can't see him being convicted, okay? Oh. Just like with, with Clinton. It's a long way, as we know, and it's a long process. And by that time, 
Uh, he can just say, "I'm not going to run for president." Or again. he could do he could do what Nixon did, right? Just yeah, he quit. Could, that, you know, yeah. quit. Quit. Uh, hey, I got a, I got, got a scenario for and you. Bef- and before what he up? leaves, pardon himself. And pardon himself, <laughs> right? <laughs> what are you going to say, uh, uh, Tim? Um, if they come to him and say, "We're going to put Jared, Ivanka, and Eric and Donald in jail," <laughs> yeah, but we might go easy on him if he resigns. <laughs> right. What would he do? Yeah, but you know what he say? Screw you! I'm not going to do it. No way. See, I'm no, hoping that's the one I, thing he stands up for is his family. I'm hoping that a, a, a designated survivor scenario happens in Washington. <laughs> that's what I've been saying because since I've seen that it, show. Because, because, uh, but not to the Congress, but to the White House. Because as long as you've got first, well, yeah, all of them. Because as long as you've got Trump, and the Trump's gone, then you got Pence, and you got to get rid of Pence, and then you've got what's his name, uh, keep Paul his, Ryan, Paul Ryan. Ryan, and then after Paul Ryan, it becomes what Mitch McConnell is next, or who's, probably who's next? Oh, jeez, uh, and, and the time of the cent. Uh, I, I, I would. And think once we get rid of P- Mitch McConnell, I think we have. Uh, Miss Harriet Anderson of Topeka, Kansas. I think I don't know who comes after that, but uh, I think they would call a special election regardless. <laughs> no, 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 they would not at all. No, there's no, there is they, they there didn't. is a, a a a process of elimination for who becomes president, and it, believe me, it goes twenty deep. Okay. Yeah. You know, so somebody yeah. would be president. Yes, they'll be obviously be the last member of Congress, right? If if that were to really happen, it would be yeah. the la- last standing member if they really blew up the Capitol. Yeah, uh, uh, John. I think I think Alexander Haig comes back and says, "I'm now in control." <laughs> yeah. I told you I'm in control. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like, hey, I'm back, you guys. Yeah. But, but you it, know what? I don't understand. Why does he keep doing these rallies? Oh, yeah. strange. Feel good. Ego. Because he likes to go places where people agree with him. And so oh, when he holds a rally, easy. everybody who agrees with him shows up to the goddamn thing. The question uh, is... Or they bring him in. Yes, Mike. The question it, is, is yeah. he's yeah. taking Air Force One. Who's paying for that? We are. We well, are. Wait a minute. Isn't he doing campaigning for... He's already got his campaign up for mm-hmm. for uh, the next election. 2020. So I thought that's not com- that doesn't come out of the government till when that happens. I thought they have to... Uh, pay for that themselves out of the campaign did you hear about secret service no no they can't they couldn't negotiate a decent rent to work out of the trump tower so now they pulled a trailer up on the street to work out of you're kidding me secret service can't afford the space in trump tower and they wouldn't give them a break on it no they shouldn't charge them anything the guy's making money it's the emoluments cause is just and you know trump never even paid off Trump never paid the contractors that built the uh, post office into his hotel in D.C. He still owes a bunch of people a bunch of money. Uh, the guy's broke. What a finagler. <laughs> uh, well, but, you know, Mueller, they, they think Mueller has his tax returns already, though. It says here on the screen right now, Mueller reviewing financial records related to Trump, his family, and the Trump organization. Uh, and you know, Anybody in, that, in the real estate business, they're going to find... Okay, can they sure. can I can they get him on the RICO laws or something now? <laughs> well, I mean, I so. actually, there's uh, the Soho project. If you look up research on Soho and his involvement in that and how they got the money, and so it involved yeah. money laundering. Yeah. So do they, they they actually put a a trailer up in front of Trump Tower? I, I just read it on one of the tweets. I'm pretty sure it came from a reputable. Well, and source. because I'm the government, tweet. because the 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 Secret Service doesn't want to have to pay the rent, they would have to pay using an office in Trump Tower. Right. Wow. You know uh, that that really says uh, something because what's interesting, and I haven't been down there lately, but I like to go down there and look because if there's a trailer in front of Trump Tower. <laughs> that looks great. Yeah. Yeah, the place is starting to look like a tra- look like a tra- trailer park. Yeah. Just Google Secret Service under news and it'll come right up. Yeah. NPR yeah. News. Yeah. It. It's on, on NewYorkTimes.com. Secret yeah. Service moves post from Trump Tower to a trailer. It's so a trailer funny. park, folks. Now, now we know why he called the White House a dump because the white trash family moved in. Right. Yeah. He called it a dump, right? I saw that. Yeah, yeah, he the called. Trailer park. He, we, he, we, he, he, we live in a trailer he park. Called, oh my God! He called the White House a dump 
when his yeah. place in Trump Tower looks like like uh, it, it doesn't look like the Taj Mahal. It, it, he he wants it to look like Versailles, and it looks like I don't know somebody. Uh, maybe you buy black felt paintings. You know, the it black looks like Midas. Midas no. threw up yeah. gold. Okay. Is he going to have malaria redecorate like so? You know, remember yeah. Jackie redid the White House. I you hope know, he doesn't let her. Here you are living you know. in a place of living history. No okay. kidding. No. Okay. And you're calling it a dump? Yes, Mike. It better be good. It's just, uh, did you see somebody in Sonoma hacked in one of those signs, you know, says, you know, slow down those construction signs? The quote says, Trump has herpes. On the side. I, I've seen that one, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I'd bring something to see. Somebody goes, I might have to go over to Sonoma and take yeah. a picture of that. Mm -hmm. I go, do it. Do it, please Why is do it every it? night we sit it. here complaining about Trump, you know? Uh, I, I listen, because, he's, I, he's, because he's, we do our show, and then, then I listen to Jack Bishop's show with Amy, and, and they do nothing but bash Trump for an hour. You know, and I would hate, I would hate for people to think of Gabnet as the Trump bashing place. Uh-huh. You know. So let's I'll all be, let's all I'll let, wait a minute. Now. I wanna I wanna go to everybody here. One by mm -hmm. one. Let's all try to say something nice about Donald Trump. No, I can't. But, okay, wow. and let well when think about <laughs> it, you gotta come up with something. Otherwise, mm. I'll hang up on you. Okay, oh, you've, no. got, you've got to, you've got oh, to come no. up with something like Jeff, something okay. good about Donald Trump, so that we're not bashing the guy constantly. Trump came from Queens. Okay, That's okay, That's well, yes, he did. So I, I pass so every time I go to Shecky's, I pass by the old uh, Trump yeah. uh, uh, mansion. Yeah, it's right there yeah. on uh, what's what's the street there, uh, uh, Tony? You know the street. Oh, I, I, I always walk by. It. I Alex, I'm not that. I forgot the street name, but I'm not that impressed with it. The house. It's on a main. Well, street. it's an old house. I mean, it's a really it's old, old house. I yeah. forgot the street that we have to ask. Yeah, Trump doesn't own it anymore, but that was his, okay. that was his boyhood big. home. Okay, Mike, something okay. good about Donald Trump. You see, I mean, give Jeff some props. He's from. He said he's from Queens. That's that's good. Okay, come on. Uh, Mike. Um, he's a, a good husband, a good fun, and a, and a good father. I don't know what else to say about him. You really think he's a good husband and a good father? I, you know, well, I don't know what else to say that's good about him. He's better than some others. <laughs> he's be yeah, he's, he's better than he some others. He doesn't throw the kids out, anyway. Okay, here we go. That's the worst one. Tony, something good about Donald Trump. I have something. I have something. I'm actually a big football fan, and when I was a kid, I got all excited for the USFL, yeah. and he owned the Generals, which had Herschel Walker in Georgia. So I got to say, he helped create, he gave me a football team, even though the league went under because of him, <coughs> he gave me a football team. Okay. Is, See, so that, that, oh, that's, that's, some, mine. that's something good. How about you, uh, uh, John? Something good about Donald Trump. Okay, and this is the one main thing that I've, that I've always been... Yeah, you know, good thing I think. Now I don't know what his reasons for it, but remember, early on, I must be the '80s or something, where he donated all this money to to rebuild Woolman Rink, the skating rink right. in Central oh, Park. Yes, right. very and, good. And that he is ended up thing. not calling it the Trump Rink, amazingly, <laughs> because I think the Woolman family were like, "Excuse mm -hmm. me, you know, it's our rink." But he did, he did. But that, it was a time when he needed that sort of good PR. So I can't say it was totally selfless. Okay. But it it uh, the rink is still in seems in pretty good shape, and it's uh, people use it every year. So I guess there's that. And now we're you know. now we're going into the deep bench of the citizens panel because this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Rob Alfano, something good about Donald Trump. <laughs> I'll tell you, that, that's a tough, tough order. The only thing I can think of yeah. is he's got some pretty handsome-looking kids. They're all relatively good-looking. So uh, let's translate that into uh, something positive about him, positive himself. Well, and, and you would have to yeah. say he has good-looking sperm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the genes were not that Can I say mine, Alex? Oh, 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 we're going to get to you, Charlene. All right. 
So, but because if we if we say he has good looking kids, we he you know all, uh, what we have to go to what he did that made them good looking kids, and that would probably be a fairly good fairly good genetics, you know, and uh, that that in that particular case, the cum didn't wind up on some woman's face. I think you know if you look at all of his kids, they're way better looking than he ever was. Every one of them really are good looking. Well, because look at who, but look, well, look at who he chose to marry. You know, he married all these trophy wives who were good looking women. I mean, uh, I, you know, I've actually had Ivana in my studio and on my show in San Francisco, a very charming woman, and just I sat there going, "This woman is gorgeous, just gorgeous." You know, and Marla Maples, in her own kind of way, was looked pretty good. You know, and then you know. <laughs> Uh, 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 malaria, even though those are fake tits and they're probably fake lips and they're probably fake cheeks and there's probably a facelift already somewhere in that in that looks good. Oh. You know. Okay, all right, Charlene's chomping at the. No, I, I want to say it because someone else will take it and then I'll be screwed. Something good so about it, Donald Trump. He has a hot wife. That's why I was getting nervous because you almost took mine. Like you know. Yeah. Well. I don't know if having a hot wife is a, is a quality that we could call saying something nice about Donald Trump. Well, she's the best looking you're, you're, first no, lady. No, but you're I've saying something seen. nice about malaria. You're not saying something <laughs> nice about Donald Trump. I mean, something good about something positive about Donald Trump. Well, the woman rink thing was great. Well, no, but that that's, that's somebody else already came up with that. Come on, you got to come up with something. Oh, I'm gonna get hung up on. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of. Well, he fixed his hair. They shortened that, it a little. That, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. I like the hairstyle better than that old one he had. The comb over isn't so, you know. Right. He's he's more. Pre it looks more presidential. Yeah, he's trying to act a little more presidential, like they said, right? Yeah. Okay. Hair is okay. Me. Here we go. Tim, something good about Donald Trump. Okay. Well, I want to clarify. Did you call Rob the deep? Bench or the deep state? No, the deep bench. Anyway. I mean, we had the we had the we had a lighter bench on top because they're all kind of light people. But you know, now we're getting to the serious people, and you are certainly okay, well, the we'll most get, serious. This is pretty deep. I got a deep one for you. Okay. We will literally thank Trump someday for showing us how bad the Russians were hacking. How messed up foreign relations are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how, how much that, we that's, need that's, to, that's that's that, no no how much no. The Tim, public needs Tim, to learn their civic duties. Tim, not, and how much not, our elections are Tim, broken. Not, not, He's shown us a broken system. Tim, you're not oh. you're, you're not oh. playing fair. Because no, what you're I mean, doing is you're you taking gotta, you're taking a negative, trying to turn it into a positive that has nothing to do with Trump himself and some action he has done that has been good. So backhanded confidence aren't allowed in this game. It's not well, an easy game. It's not an easy game to play. Okay. I mean, this is very difficult. No, when he said well, election thing, though, now he's making uh, New York, uh, you know, even though they said they weren't going to can't recount, he's recounting everything, right? That's going to cost us a fortune, right? No, yeah, but, 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 but uh, Tim, can you come up with something? Say, say well, something he, nice he, about he hired a, He did hire a few good people. Maybe in Kelly, maybe in McMaster's. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll accept that. And he pushes stuff for the veterans. Okay. Even if, if it doesn't come to fruition, he does try to push, take care of the veterans. Okay, okay, see, see, that's, that's good. That's something positive about Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah, he's and, right, I guess. And now yeah. we come to Brian. Oh, God, what kind of answer are we going to get uh -oh. here? <laughs> <laughs> Brian? What compliment do I have for um, full of shittikus? Well, let's see. He does a wonderful job on his hair, seeing as to how it looks like it's uh, looks like it's a pile of shit. But uh, but you know, we it, already we, we, quite we, well. We already well we already covered that, so you've got to come up with something else, something else good to say about him. Mm. Mm. Come on, he's, he's not living in your town. How's that? There you go. 
because yeah, my bowels would freeze and yeah, you got 28 minutes left. You can... <laughs> yeah. we got plenty of time. You can come up plenty with something. I'm sure. Shall we? Shall we come back to you, Brian? Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I guess that leaves me, doesn't it? Oh boy, I got nothing. <laughs> Bye. Hang up on yourself. I got nothing. Yeah, I'm going to hang up on myself. I uh, 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 something good Facebook that I could did. <laughs> something good I could say about Donald Trump. Uh, you know, I mean, I wish there was something even in his past. I mean, Walman Rink was about the best thing you could come up with. Actually, right, that, that was a good one. That was one of the few times he ever did anything in which he was giving. And didn't expect anything back except maybe the goodwill that was engendered by it. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, he didn't put his name on it, you know. Uh, apparently, he didn't do it quietly. Otherwise, you would have never known he had saved Woolman Rink. But, you know. Didn't he do something for a kid? He got he saw something and while he was president. Um, wasn't there a story? Oh, about yeah, yeah. There was this crippled kid. And uh, he, uh, he, he, he loved baseball, and he, oh, I forgot. That was Babe Ruth's story. I forget. <laughs> <laughs> no, that well, was, uh, he did a little, English, a little English boy who finally died because they, you know, couldn't, they weren't able to, to, to find, you know, get, get him over to America and all that. Trump at least was, was at one point, was saying, we've, you know, something ought to be done. We ought to help and all that. Of course, sent nothing happened. But he at least sent he, his jet. Yeah, but Trump he's, did he's, something, I think, for some kid somewhere he, recently. He sent his jet yes. to go get a kid. Right. I, you know, Wait, it was, was it a make-a-wish uh, no, kid uh, or No, something? no, no. This was the one that they talked about the other day in the press conference. There's a kid who wrote Trump and said, uh, I think you're doing a wonderful job, and I earn money by mowing lawns for neighbors. Right. And... Uh, if you want your, uh, and here's an open offer for me to mow your lawn for free. And uh, he said, well, wh why don't you, you know, when you get a chance, come to Washington. And I'll make you a guest here at the White House and you can hang out with the greenskeeper and help him. And then I, thought, I thought that was at least, yeah, I mean, it's too much for a kid to mow, you know. You but, think do you think Trump really did that, or that was the people around him? Well, I mean, that may be the people around him, but it's still... A, yeah, it's, because he's lying about the Boy Scouts, that they sent him a letter yeah. thanking him and well, saying... He's doing that to make up for the Boy Scouts, maybe. Yeah. Well, you know what gets me about those fucking Boy Scouts of that jamboree? When he was making all those statements that everybody was complaining about, some of them were cheering him. It was well, like yeah, a, they don't know it, any better. It was like a Nazi Yugen rally for crying right, out right. loud. Exactly. They were at the age where you could you can mold their minds because they're not developed yet. Yeah, boy. And he's a famous he is, guy. He you is know. the president. Yeah, he's a famous guy. You know, uh, even if he wasn't George president, w. they would have. Yeah. He has improved George W. Bush's reputation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. There you go. That's a that's a plus. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad in a way that we we've kind of been able to come up with a few uh, things here. If because we wouldn't have done this if Phil was on. We don't want to oh, talk about no. Phil. <laughs> well, Phil always defends. Wait till tomorrow. That's his job. Yeah. We'd all abstain. Well, all I'm saying is that I listen to you know I listen to to Jack and Amy, and then I I hear all this this, uh, this Trump bashing every night, and I go, you know, I don't like just hearing. Trump being bashed. I don't think a that's particularly great programming, and but I don't think that it 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 gets us anywhere. And then I said to myself, but what have we been doing on this show for the past six months? Mm. We've been Trump bashing. It's mm -hmm. hard to avoid it. You mm -hmm. know, it's hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, because he does so many things that are so stupid. Granted, we took up the first you know forty five minutes of the show griping about Facebook. But that's hardly a topic, you know. Uh, but when it comes to talking about issues, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if there were other issues that we could talk about? And a that's, that's why, and that's why, and that, and that, given him constructive criticism too. Yeah, well, and that is why I have I actually brought up that thing tonight about the fact that everybody looks so goddamn unhappy as they were coming home from work, and I was thinking, why don't you know as a product. Why don't we consider it a product 
and and create happiness in this country and create happiness for everybody. Because how do you monetize it? it well, it, it, you don't monetize it. That's what we've got to learn not to do. Every, everything is not necessarily money-making. But, Doesn't well, that go but, back to stand-up comedy? <laughs> Aren't that what they're doing? You but, know. you know, these people who Making went to some job, like people. Tony goes to a job he absolutely can't stand, probably gets paid. <laughs> Your uncle probably pays you some kind of substandard wages, doesn't he? It, it, it's nothing to crow about. You yeah, nothing to crow about. <laughs> Put and, it this way. And, and, but, you know, you're right, though, Alan. Can I say one thing? Though? And Tony should, I, it, it, Tony should be doing, if he's doing that labor, he should be doing it at a price that makes him say, Hey, you know, it's worth doing these boxes, you know, True. and, and, you know, it's my and, fault and, and that, that he puts in some fucking air conditioning in that warehouse <laughs> so that you don't have to swelter exactly. during How the summer. Fan, you know? You, know, you know, I blame myself. But I'm not, but it's not just your, your uncle. Your uncle is just emulating all the other businessmen exactly. in this country who don't know how to take care of their employees. I don't hate the guy, Alex, or anything. No, I know I'm you. Just, I know you don't hate. You know it. what it is? Can I say one thing though? Because I know you, Tony. I kind of took your advice though, Alex. Yeah. And I'll tell you what I'm afraid of. I don't mean to make it about myself, but I don't really mind doing a bit, you know, like a certain job because I can say, hey, listen, I was a little lazy in life, so whatever it is, right? But he, everybody else has a gripe. But the one thing that scares me is I was telling this to Rob. I really feel like, you know, because you see people get sick, I'm kind of like taking the little things now important. Like, like if, I, if I have my health and my hands and my eyes, you know, I would hate to have a bad job and then get sick. I'd really be fucking pissed off. See, I think it's good to have money, but these people who are obsessed by it, it's not good. It's like a cancer. Because like you said, Alex, the more they have, the more they want. Well, all I'm saying is, is that I just think that if, you know, I don't know how you pass a law to this effect, but certainly if I were president, I would suddenly write a executive order declaring that this country should take the first steps towards being the happiest country in the world. And do you know something? We're, we're, there is a country where that is a standard for them. I think it may be one of the Scandinavian countries. I think it's Sweden. Is it Sweden? Finland has the most uh, depressed and suicidal, but, but Sweden, I think, is one where they, they push. Right, you're right. But, the, but, but I think they uh, actually have laws to that effect. Pretty that much, say yeah. that we're we, we want to make our population happy. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be unconstitutional, right? <laughs> if you think about it, what does it say in this country? <laughs> we are life, liberty, and the, the pursuit, pursuit right. of happiness. The pursuit That's of a it, little right. legalese in there that means yeah. we don't want you happy. We want you to chase it. Yeah, we want you to chase it. No, but I but do Alex, believe. Did you say I, like I, overseas they get like more vacation time? It seems like yeah. Well, they, yeah, but yeah. the yeah. point Almost everyone does uh, <laughs> six uh, weeks. I, I in think Europe. it was Sweden that I that they did a thing about that they actually passed laws saying that their oh. m their their uh, mission is to make everybody in Sweden happy, and they do that by making sure that nobody is poor. They it subsidize wow. people who are poor, who don't have as much as others. Uh, they uh, you know give you a good education. Uh, they get, they make sure. I think they, I may be wrong, but something like two months vacation a year, oh, something I'm like that. Yeah, am I, uh, do you know about this, Jeff? You seem to nod. In uh, yes, tell tell us about it. Oh, turn on your mic. Turn on your mic. I agree with you, and uh, but I don't remember the exact. Numbers, but I think you're right. If, uh, I would be totally freaked out. about Sweden. I think that's correct. Yeah, what were you saying, Rob? I'd be totally freaked out to live in a country that mandated happiness because <laughs> I'm not capable of it, and I would feel like I just like if everything would be happy and I'm still not happy, then I'd kill myself. <laughs> well, I mean, but, but nobody, you know, know, it, uh, I mean, there's the Philippines to Venezuela. What, no, what you what what you do in a country is you just mandate that the country has to do everything it can to make its citizens happy, to make their lives better. And and, and that's and, like France and, when you're pregnant, and you have the baby, they send a woman to the house, you know. Yeah, to but the problem is the problem that. is that baby has to grow up French, and <laughs> you know. Yes, uh, 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 John has his hand up, yeah. which is the rule. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm looking at a, a website called the local.se, which I think is Swedish. And it's uh, according to the report of, uh, it was in March, of the of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network released its 2017 World Happiness Report. And for the first time, Sweden was at the bottom of the 10. It was Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Switzerland, Finland, Netherlands, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and then Sweden as the top 10 oh, happiest so countries so by whatever they are. Well, so maybe it's you know, Finland that did it, or, or what was the first, what was the yeah. first one, Norway? You know, I knew, I knew a Norwegian, a Norwegian girl, and she was always so happy, really. She's one of the, I could see that. And by the she way, was from Norway, and she's always happy. By like, the way, yeah. you do notice that the Scandinavian countries are all in the top ten. Yeah, and, and Iceland. I, and I don't know if you've, and Iceland, I don't know if you've been to any of those countries. I have. I went to uh, Norway for the, uh, was it Norway? Wait a minute, where, where's Oslo? Uh, uh, Norway. 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 I That's went to the, the Olympics in Lillehammer. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, Little Hummer, Norway. Yeah, I guess it was Norway. Hey, uh, Alex. Now, wait a minute. Let me s say this. And uh, I've never been in such a frozen tundra in my entire fucking life. So maybe cold weather makes for <laughs> happiness. Yeah, Canada's in there too. Canada's right? in there too. Yeah, yeah. What were you going to say, Jeff? You want Australian? Well, I went okay. to Denmark. Uh, my son was there for, uh, you know. Uh, for a summer or something like that. <laughs> and uh, I, I thought it was very nice, and the people were very nice, too. But the one thing uh, he always said, he's, I said, what was the most difficult thing about living there? He says, I couldn't say the name of the street that I lived on. Yeah, because, uh -huh, yeah. Because, yeah. Yes, what were you going to say, Tim? Uh, I, I, Rob had some misgivings, and here's why. In the New York Times a month ago, Philip, they were, the Philippines were trying to pass a law that said you have to sing the national anthem when it's played in public, and you have to do so with enthusiasm, or you could go to prison. Sounds like Korea or something. Oh, that's really? North, North, North Korea. Korea. Yeah. The same way. North Korea. I'll tell you my so, my greatest memory of of Norway, and I think it was Norway. Cause Lillehammer was Norway. Oslo was Norway. So I, I mm -hmm. pulled pulled into Oslo, and then they drove us up to. Uh, uh, up to uh, uh, Lillehammer, uh, was that we were doing a radio show every day, and right next door was a fast food place, right? And we would go over, and, and during the show, have somebody go get us hamburgers. And they would bring them back, and we ate hamburgers. And these hamburgers were the most delicious fucking hamburgers you ever tasted. <laughs> and I swear to you, we one day went through six of these fucking hamburgers. They were so good. They were so delicious. And we said, what makes these hamburgers so delicious? What kind of beef? Where do you get the beef? And they said, beef? <laughs> Elk. Reindeer? I, reindeer. Reindeer. Yeah. We had been eating reindeer wow. six times a day. Wow. Did any of those uh, patties glow red? Yeah, we have the Rudolph burger and the dancer burger. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, it was it was reindeer and they eat reindeer there instead of beef. And I'm going, I can't eat any more of these now that I know what it is. They were fine until I, you know, found out what they were. Did you ever have a buffalo burger? That's supposed to be good or something. Mm -hmm. right? Buffalo. Yes, yeah, Buffalo. Buffalo, Buffalo is good. A while back. <laughs> well, there used to be a place in San Francisco called Tommy's Joint on Van Ness Avenue. Mm -hmm. And Tommy's Joint, if it's still there, they, even when they, the buffalo were rare, they had buffalo stew. They actually had a stew made out of buffalo meat. Yes, uh, Mike? I had buffalo once on the train going to Iowa. It was a meatloaf. God, you know, it was actually good. It was real tender. Well, I mean, you know, the buffalo is close to a ca being a cow, being cattle, you know. But he's like the, the waiter said you, had to, you actually had to put a little bit of fat in it. Yeah. It was so yeah, darn lean. They're pretty lean, yeah. And they're not, uh, they're not uh, an endangered species anymore. They're pretty plentiful now. Is that the same as bison or that's different? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, bison, bison, buffalo. In Yellowstone, Yellowstone Park, right? No, all over that there part. There are farms now, too. 
They have farms oh. where they grow. Wyoming and places. Do yeah. they know they're being? Oh, they ra- raised them like cattle. Yeah, raised bison like you would cattle. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, had, a, we had a farmer that was killed by one. You know what? You know they're what? Pretty, I would, pretty here's the thing, though. I, I I would hate to be. I think the one thing you don't want to be is anything on the really low end of the food chain. You know, because mm-hmm. like if you're cattle, you know, or maybe you don't know, but you're going to be slaughtered. You're going to be eaten, right? Rabbit. <laughs> and uh, if you're a lobster, you're mm. thinking, hey, this is pretty nice. I'm here in this uh, really nice tank here. And look at all those people out there. They're, they're eating <laughs> things and stuff. This is a nice view. And then all of a sudden, somebody picks you up and drops you in hot boiling water. <laughs> what a terrible life for a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> and all, Except if you're if you're a blue lobster. Well, uh, let you, uh, this is one place here in New York where we used to go get lobster, and they would actually take the lobster out of the thing, and walk them past your table, and then, <laughs> you know, it came back cooked, and you're going, did they really have to pass it past here? I don't I don't want to see or get emotionally involved with anything I'm going to have to eat. <laughs> you know, it then, was, then they gave you your personal the personal belongings. There was this movie trip. called the Cul- Culpepper Cattle Company. Why you should never marry. There was this this movie called the Culpepper Cattle Company, and one of the most memorable scenes is when a cowboy is talking to the kid who is going along with all these cowboys on their drive, and he says, "What's the name of your horse?" And the cowboy looks at him and says, "Kid, you never name anything you might have to eat someday." <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. saw that somewhere in a in a movie or something. Yeah. That if uh, you know you had the animal and you became close to it on the farm, yeah, you could you won't you wouldn't eat it either. Like you know anything with a name, you don't eat. Or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, my uh, mom. Uh, my mom is eighty seven and she grew up you know at the Victory Gardens during World War Two, and they raised a chicken that uh, they got to be friendly with, and then when it was time to eat the chicken. My mother was crying. She was a little girl, 10 years old or whatever. She was crying. <laughs> but then, you know, they told her they're going to kill it. They didn't. She didn't know. They all sat around the table and none of them could eat it. So the wow. thing died for nothing because nobody could eat the, the poor chicken. Son of a bitch. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, 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 Brian has his hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say in response to what you said earlier about not wanting to get emotionally involved in something before eating it. I was, I don't know if you heard me. I said, that's why you should never marry. (laughs) 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 Yeah. Uh, I, uh, um, yeah. Okay. I'll (laughs) think about that one. Uh, Well, Sounds like a midnight blue joke. From well, yeah, back yeah, in the- yeah. Well, you know, I, well, I thought it was fish. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> oh well, I'm glad Renee isn't here. I'd get hell for that joke. Uh, Sorry, Charlie. But uh, uh, you know, I just think happiness is. Uh, you know, I would love to. I, I saw this one guy, big, uh, big fat black guy with a suit on, and I, he just did not look happy. And I just went, you know, what What are all these people doing with their lives? You know, every, when I went to work, I was usually happy. I was never, when I was coming home from work, well, I was, com- I did come home from work miserable on several occasions because the show sucked in my mind. And I was always, you know, you, you know who was always unhappy Ooh. for years? The most unhappy guy I ever saw, you know, Shecky for how many odd years worked for David Letterman. And in the early days when he was at NBC, Shecky invited me to come by and just hang out with him. And and Dave was in the studio doing his show, and then the show broke and was over with. He walked out of that studio. I never saw anybody look so depressed in my life. And if you've read any books about Letterman and about that show, he would go into his office and he would start throwing things because the show didn't go right. He was never really happy with the shows he was doing. Now, I think maybe in later years, as he got older and after the heart, you know, the heart uh, bypass operation and stuff, he probably started taking the job yeah. in stride. But in a those, mel- mellowing out a bit. Yeah. In those days, and Meryl Marco, who was his girlfriend mm-hmm. at the time, 
uh, and created things like stupid pet tricks and so on for the show. Meryl told me once when I asked her, um, uh, you know, uh, she used to refer to it as, well, I don't talk about David that much. That's boyfriend stuff. That's how she used to <laughs> refer to it. But once uh, she said he was never happy after a show. That's why I left. That's why I couldn't do the show any longer. She said, That's, you might have had some classic depression. She said, no, depression. Yeah, oh, of course. But no matter what I did, no matter how good a show I put together for him, it, it, he was unhappy with it. And he said, after a while, that takes its toll, you know. And, sure. and, and so when you talk, Rob, about the fact that if they mandated happiness, you perhaps couldn't be happy. Well, neither maybe could David Letterman in those days or whatever. I, 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 I but, at least, so at, but at least you can't, you, you as a nation don't do anything to impede the possibility of happiness. Okay? But that's even worse. What do you mean? Because it's that's worse? more pressure on well, yeah. because it's more pressure on you to be happy when you when you think to yourself, I have absolutely no re I go I go through that now. I think I have a really good job that I don't hate. I have a I have a a, a great wife. I I have everything I want. I have a good you know, I have a good family. Mm -hmm. Why am I miserable? Could you imagine if if everything around the government forced you to you know was was you know to round you to boost happiness and I still well, look, couldn't be I'm, happy? I, I look, I'm I, you I know mean, I'm I'm, I'm like you, Rob. I mean, I'm miserable all the time. Yeah. You know, I've wasted my life being miserable. One day I'm going to drop dead and I'm going to go, gee, uh, what a life wasted being miserable. I should have spent that time being happy. That's me too. But you can't just decide to be happy. But you know, I I. It, it, I don't mind being unhappy on my terms. I mind being unhappy because of external terms that that f create an unhappiness. And that's what I'm saying when we say that as a nation, we should try to make a nation that is a place for people to be happy. If you can't be happy, nothing we can do about that. But at least we're not impeding your ability to have happiness. Well, you know, does this make you sense? Know, Wait a minute, Jeff, does this make sense at all? Well, I know more people who are very happy. I think my wife is one of those people. She's she's happy all the time. It's great. Uh, she just laughed as she went by. But yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's that's her nature. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, admirable. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And, and I don't know. I'm kind of like sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down, and yeah, and it's okay for me. I I can handle it. But. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of people who are just disappointed in life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know what the biggest thing that makes people unhappy? No. Being a paycheck or two from total bankruptcy. That's what makes most of the people in this country unhappy. <laughs> I, I thought oh, that I was know me. that one. <laughs> I, I thought that was me, and I changed that, and I'm not a paycheck or two, and I'm still miserable. Mm -hmm. I know, but uh, Zuckerberg wants people to be happy, so they'll use Facebook. Here's the good and news. Bill Gates and yeah. some of those other people. So they're talking universal basic income. Well, here, here's, the good, here's the good news I have to look at. And that mm -hmm. is, and here's, here's how I, the, the happiest thought that I have, is I am always two paychecks away from being broke, but I don't get a paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. There you go. <laughs> so, but uh, they can raise prices on you, though. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe I think. Yeah. What were you going to say? I think, I think instead, when uh, instead of the usual uh, outro music that we're going to have in a couple of a couple of minutes, you really ought to put on "Don't Worry, Be Happy." <laughs> I can't, and I can't do well, that worry. because there are laws against that. I know. Well, and okay. I'm unhappy because I can't play music on a non-commercial program for free. Right. right. Okay. Right. If it were a commercial program, different story. But on a non-commercial program, I oh. think that we I should be able to play music. You know. Right. You're not. There's no monetary. You're not monetizing this at all. Yeah. And if I want to play music here, I can. But I got to. It costs what to get just a license for completely non-commercial. I think it's like five hundred a year or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know. It, it's mm -hmm. uh, you know. So I'm I'm unhappy because of that. What else can hey, I be Trump's unhappy? lawyers are happy. Huh? They, 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 so figure I, how to get the, they figure out how to make Trump stop lying. Yeah. In all of his tweets. 
they uh, they uh, every tweet will now have to be in the form of a question. It'll end in a question mark. Yeah. So it's not, he's not misstating any facts. He's just joking or asking a question. Uh. All he needs is a question mark, and he's it's covered. Oh, I see. That's kind of what they said about this this Seth uh, Rich thing. Yeah. It, these were all we were just joking back and forth. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Both parties laugh. What What did you say? You distorted a little bit there. I say that's only a joke when both when all parties involved laugh as the same. Yeah. 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 And one of the parties is suing everybody else. Yeah, Celebrity yes, Jeopardy. Uh, here. Uh, Charlene, what, what? Charlene, your mic is off. Your your mic is off. Oh, turn, turn it on. Is it back on? Yeah, now yep. it's on. Okay, in my in my misery, Alex, mm -hmm. this show and you being here and doing it makes me happy. I just want to let you know that. Because uh, oh. uh, well, I'm pretty well, miserable. Then that that, <laughs> is, that in and of itself is pathetic, and I'd commit suicide <laughs> if I were you. Oh wait, I better not say that. I can get two and a half <laughs> years in jail. Uh, yes, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, you had something you wanted to say? Yeah. I think that there's days that, you know, Alex has a certain depression about life that I always see. Yeah. But he brings a lot of enjoyment to a lot of yes, people. Yes, I know. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you. Oh, well, yes. uh, uh, you know, it's always it's always nice to hear. Uh, know where I can get a job? Uh, anyway, we enjoy your depression, Alex. We really do. Hey, I want to thank all of you. This has been wonderful tonight. This has been absolutely wonderful, and, we, and nobody got to see it, but they'll get to see it later when I put it up. Jeff Stein, thank you. Mike, thank you as always. Tony, good to hear from you tonight. John, glad you you called us tonight. We haven't heard from you in a while. I know. I'm yeah. Good. Yeah, and, and, I come. I came in late, and I end up on Jack's show because it's yeah. uh, because I finally make it home before midnight. Yeah. That's my problem. Uh, uh, Rob, so I missed you yesterday. Rob, thank you. Uh, uh, Mark, uh, Charlene, call us anytime. Love having you on the show. Tim, of course, oh, you're wonderful. You. And Brian, snarky as ever. Thank well, you, snarky. That's why we love him. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wave goodbye, okay? That's our citizens panel for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And I thank them for having been with us. And uh, we thank you for having been with us as well. Uh, I, we'll see you again tomorrow. I'm sorry if uh, we didn't have TV tonight. Uh, but uh, the reason we didn't have it is that uh, there's something wrong with it. I may have actually been able to run the program. It's just that maybe I wasn't getting it here. I don't know what the story is. But anyway, uh, oh, uh, did we run out of theme already? We shouldn't have run out of theme. Here we go. Let me see here. Let me, we'll start it again. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, same time. Uh, let me get rid of all this here. Uh, hold on a second, folks. Why isn't this? Oh, wait a minute. Go offline. Yes. Okay. That's right. Okay. I don't need that. And I'm off the. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. See, it's all technology, folks. Fuck it. I'm Alex Bennett. Stay tuned for the intersection, which is next with Jack and Amy. I'll see you about tomorrow night on T. Well, that'll be uh, a Friday night. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her. Okay. Okay. <laughs>